It's the morning of December 24th, 2018. Sukuna stands with his aide, Uraume, atop a skyscraper. It's finally time for his big climactic fight. They didn't agree to any specific location, but Sukuna is not worried. He's sure he'll know where he's supposed to be. And as the sun rises, he can feel a surge of cursed energy. On another rooftop, Gojo set up everything for his first attack. Utahime Ito is using her cursed technique, Solo Forbidden Area, to amplify Gojo's cursed energy. To excel at Jujutsu is to excel at subtraction. The degree to which a sorcerer can omit the intonations, movements, and other elements that comprise or activate a cursed technique determine that sorcerer's skill. But Utahime leaves nothing out. Words, gestures, dance, music. Elevating the curse technique to the level of a ritual boosts its potency to 120%. And Gojo, powered up, does the same. He takes his first move slow, reciting an invocation, and shifting his hand through ritual movements. With Utahime's power and this approach, he has reached 200% of his usual power for this first attack. Hollow Purple. Sukuna can sense Gojo's presence. He focuses his cursed energy, trying to come up with a counter. Even as the massive blast of Hollow Purple rushes towards them, tearing up skyscrapers like they're cardboard models caught in front of a hurricane. The building Sakuna was standing on just crumbles to pieces. Hundreds of tons of rubble just breaking away and crashing down to the ground. The whole area is covered in clouds of dust and debris filling the streets. But eventually, a figure steps out. That wasn't enough to kill Sakuna. But he's already having to use Reverse Curse Technique to heal from the damage. Gojo's here and smiling. He got the first good hit in. Sukuna's going to have to try and match his level. Sukuna grins, calling out Gojo's attitude. The King of Curses is in phase just because an upstart got the drop on him. The way he sees it, Gojo is just a fish on the cutting board. And Sukuna is ready to tear him apart. Satoru, however, has a counter argument. Sukuna has to be scared of him. He's still wearing Megami's face, hoping that'll make Gojo hold back but he's actually been doing some special training. He is fully prepared to go all out here. Thankfully, that just makes Gojo think he's fighting Megami's dad, Toji, again. And he's happy to beat Toji up some more. He'll worry about Megami after he's killed Sukuna. Sukuna opens up with a quick snap kick to close the distance. Gojo takes a step back, throwing a right hook that Sukuna parries easily. Before the ancient sorcerer can get his own combination in, though, Gojo drops to the ground. Sukuna is confused, but Gojo just swipes his finger. And just like that, Sukuna is pulled against the wall as Curse Technique Laps Blue kicks in. The sorcerer's bones start to crack as bit by bit, his body is forced through the wall, crashing across the lobby and outside. Sukuna is on his knees, and before he can stand up, he spots Gojo running towards him. He's moving with so much force that every step leaves an impact crater. Before the two sorcerers can reach each other, the ground starts to tilt, and Gojo launches himself into the air. The section of bridge Sukuna standing on rises too, as Gojo uses Limitless to heft it into the air. One swing is enough to throw Sukuna and his bit of bridge into another skyscraper. Sukuna is almost crushed by the force of the technique, but before the bridge lands, he manages to push himself down, landing on a nearby rooftop. Gojo's right there, ready to try again. But before he can, Sukuna activates this mantle. That takes Gojo aback. He's not seeing any sign of an attack. But that's because Sukuna targeted the building behind him. The skyscraper is starting to fall. Gojo turning around in shock as Sukuna charges at him. It's close, but not enough. Gojo catches Sukuna's fist, even as the building keeps falling towards them. Sukuna's next punch is infused with energy, but Gojo's more than strong enough to catch it. The two sorcerers meet each other's gaze as the window of the falling building cracks around them. The building crashed down around the two men as their battle continued. A splintered door separates Gojo and Sakuna, leaving them both blind to the other sorcerer's next punch. The whole thing falls apart as it touches the ground, rumbling and kicking up another dust cloud. As it clears, two figures emerge, walking side by side. Sakuna and Gojo are actually on good terms at this point making a joke about who's going to end up blamed about the property damage. Kicking things up a notch, Sukuna and Gojo both activate domain expansion. The whole area begins to shake with the unleashed energy. Both domains emerge at once. Sukuna's malevolent shrine soars up, mouths gaping right in front of Gojo's infinity. 
Both men grin at each other. They're having the best time in the world going all out like this. Neither of them are used to a proper challenge. Their domains overlap, making it an even clash. Outside the barrier, there's a ripple of folding space. But there's a problem. Sukuna's domain has a bigger range. Since Malevolent Shrine doesn't have its own barrier, it can strike infinity from outside where it's weak. The barrier cracks, a slim fracture at first, but it grows. A second later, infinity breaks into shards, a bunch of black glass falling over the battlefield. But Malevolent Shrine is still standing. Sukuna looks down on Gojo, grinning. Gojo's surprised. But before he can react, the shrine's guaranteed hit triggers, cutting Gojo's neck. Sukuna just stands there atop his shrine, triumphant, towering over the white-haired sorcerer. Gojo reaches for his wound, trying to put a hand to it. Watching the fight unfold on Jujutsu High's TV network, Yuji Itadori cries out for his mentor. But then, the wound is gone. Gojo used reverse curse technique to heal. He's still in this. As the watching sorcerers point out, with Gojo's domain down, he won't be able to use Limitless to get away easily. Gojo is still in trouble. Proving that, Gojo is hit with slash after slash. Sukuna grins, holding his position atop Malevolent Shrine. Gojo is covered in blood at this point. Only his eyes are showing, but he hasn't stopped healing. Sukuna leaps off the shrine, lunging at Gojo. He's not going to give the other sorcerer a chance to get out of the shrine's range and recover. He goes from the punch to a roundhouse kick Gojo just managed to block. Sukuna is too fast for the injured Gojo to keep up with, ducking under the white-haired sorcerer's next blow smoothly. But it's not enough to stop Gojo from trying, though, bringing a cursed energy-infused fist down towards Sukuna. Close, but the King of Curses is still ahead, rolling away from the blow and getting up, ready to keep going. The two sorcerers pause, eyeing each other. It's a tough fight, Gojo still healing and taking slashes one by one. But he's got a new move to turn this around. New shadow style, simple domain. As soon as it opens, Gojo's cuts start to actually heal. Now that he's made a hole in Malevolent Shrine, he's got a window free from the ever-ending flow of cuts. Sukuna charges at Gojo again, but now he's faster, ducking under the blow. He's making a comeback. Sukuna's not out of this either, twisting around and landing another shot at Gojo. This time, slashes materialize all over the sorcerer's body. Everyone watching with Yuji is shocked. Gojo's out of cursed energy? He can't heal anymore? Gojo tries to kick Sukuna back, but the ancient sorcerer blocks, darting away and throwing another round of slashes at him. This time, they get his neck again. But then, Gojo hugs him. Sukuna's bewildered. Gojo just closed the space between them extremely quickly. He wasn't healing because he was trying to prepare his cursed technique. Grinning, Gojo leans back. Curse Technique Reversal Red Sukuna is blasted back right through Malevolent Shrine. The Ancient Curse user lands on the pile of skulls. Half of his head is bloody. Gojo's dusting his shirt off, even as he starts healing all those scars. That wasn't easy. Sukuna picks himself up as Gojo asks him if he can go bigger than this. Sukuna works to expand Malevolent Shrine's range to its maximum, even as Gojo opens up Unlimited Void yet again. It is another domain clash, with the two sorcerers both forming their domains over each other. Gojo straight up calls this a do-over. He and Sukuna start trading rapid blows, their fists getting faster and faster. But it's Gojo who feels the backlash. Sukuna has domain amplification up, coating his body with the energy of Malevolent Shrine. A punch can now cut. Doing that while your domain is open takes a crazy amount of cursed energy, enough to surprise even Gojo. But it's Sukuna who was shocked a second later. Gojo's still swinging, throwing another punch at Sukuna. When the King of Curses tries to hit back, Gojo ducks underneath, punching his foe right in the gut. Gojo turns, about to try and move away and get some space, but stops. For a second, Sukuna and Gojo are back to back. Inside, unlimited void. Since Sukuna's touching Gojo, he's gotten around the domain's defense. That was all he needed. Once again, Unlimited Void is shattered into pieces. Malevolent Shrine is still standing strong. This time, Gojo actually scowls. Sukuna smirks, asking if his enemy needs another do-over. But before Gojo can answer, he's blasted away. Malevolent Shrine is back up, so we are back to never-ending slashes. But Sukuna's in for a shock. This time, each cut has barely done any damage. 
Gojo's got yet another trick, grinning at Sukuna. This is Falling Blossom Emotion, the same technique Naobito Zainin used back in Shibuya. It repels anything it touches, but unlike Simple Domain, he still takes some damage. He just needs time to get his domain back. But Gojo doesn't want to wait. He's activating domain expansion again, right now. A shadow falls over Shinjuku. Like Gojo's about to create a huge barrier, hoping Sukuna can't reach outside it with Malevolent trying to destroy it. But Gojo's going the other way. Once the shadow clears, everyone is in shock. The barrier is tiny. Gojo has reduced the size of his technique's barrier to make it as resilient as possible. As Jujutsu High watches, the barrier starts to be overwhelmed with slashes. Eventually, the domain explodes, sending shards flying between Gojo and Sukuna one more time. Yuji cries out, but this clash went differently. Behind Sukuna, Malevolent Shrine starts to fall apart, the pile of corpses and rock collapsing into debris. And while Sukuna is still grinning, he's bleeding badly. Gojo did enough damage with this last clash that Sukuna cannot maintain his domain. He manages to heal the surface wound soon enough, and now both men are grinning at each other. Now, neither of them can use their domain or curse techniques. Gojo tries to close the gap, but Sukuna is already jumping through the air. Beneath him, the earth starts erupting into craters of rubble, split by the force of his impact as he leaps from point to point. But Gojo's catching up. Sukuna can sense something coming. Gojo's flung rubble at him. Sukuna brushes it away, but now the two sorcerers are in punching range. Sukuna blocks the first kick, but Gojo isn't letting up. Even as Sukuna backs away, his opponent keeps rushing forward. But Gojo's worried. Sukuna's still smiling, still confident. And a drop of blood snakes its way down from Gojo's nose. Still, Gojo's frown only lasts a moment. The two are going to open their domains. Again. The Black Sphere flares. This time though, Gojo's got a plan. The domain fight was enough to force Sukuna to lose Malevolent Shrine due to damage. So if Gojo just punches him, does more damage, and forces Sukuna to drop the shrine before that happens, Gojo's Unlimited Void will kick in and immobilize him. He is just a few punches away from victory. He starts strong with an Aura 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 style barrage of fists. While the curse is reeling, Gojo circles around him, ready to strike from behind. Gojo stretches his hand out, gesturing away. Before Sukuna can find his footing, Gojo blasts him into the shrine. Grinning, he pulls Sukuna back towards himself, not willing to give him any time to recover. Sukuna grimaces against the force. Gojo is fully prepared to follow up with a mighty blow. As Gojo punches, Sukuna blocks with an open palm. The two sorcerers just grin at each other. Their powers clashing as Malevolent Shrine starts to fall apart. The two back away, both needing a second to recover. When Sukuna looks up, his head is half ruined once again. A bloody mess. Gojo isn't giving him a chance to heal, punching Sukuna back into a tree. But it wasn't enough. We're doing domain expansion yet again. But there's a difference this time. Gojo's domain came up just a split second faster. It was less than a second, but Gojo was fast enough. Unlimited void hit. This time, one punch is all it takes. Sukuna just stares in shock. Malevolent Shrine collapses behind him. He's lost in Unlimited Void. Gojo has won. He's not done with Sukuna yet, though. Gojo charges forward through the void, ready to wreck his opponent's body worse than Yuji's was at the detention center. But he's interrupted. Sukuna finally uses Megami's curse technique. Behold, the eight-handled Sword Divergent Sila, Divine General Mahoraga. Gojo's not completely caught off guard here. He knew Mahoraga was coming. He starts charging his cursed energy, hoping to destroy the Summit Spirit with one overwhelming blast. Before he can, though, Mahoraga lunges forward, cracking the ground with one mighty punch. Gojo moves back, the Limitless keeping him safe. But he's already shocked. Somehow, Mahoraga has already adapted to his unlimited void. Gojo backs off, letting his domain fade, and Mahoraga does the same. Sukuna is almost healed now. He smiles. Gojo's frowning. How did Mahoraga adapt so quickly? It takes him a second to work it out, but he gets it. Megumi. He can use 10 shadows technique. Sukuna forced the young man's soul to adapt to unlimited void for Mahoraga. The two sorcerers take a break from the fighting, trading words. 
They're both smirking like they don't have anything to worry about. Sakuna's convinced that he shut down any chance of Gojo taking him down with Unlimited Void. But Gojo's sure that he still has a shot. Only Mahoraga's adapted to the domain. He can open it now to restrict Sakuna. One more attack will end this. But Sakuna chuckles. Gojo can't open his domain again. And even as Gojo tries, blood spurts out from his nose. He wipes away the blood while Sakuna explains what happened very smugly. Getting to open his domain so quickly required Gojo to destroy and recreate his brain to reset the time limit. And he's done it over and over again. Even if Gojo manages to open a domain now, he won't have the precision to fight Sakuna. Gojo stares, trying to think of something. But his time's up. Now, Sakuna is fully in control of the fight. He can create Malevolent Shrine with a barrier. Gojo won't be able to run from that. With his opponent trapped, Sakuna just has to keep attacking until he's adapted to Infinity as well. Then, Gojo's last defense will be gone. This fight is basically over. Sakuna grins, saying one last goodbye to Satoru Gojo, a mediocre sorcerer who was lucky to be born in an era where he wasn't around. Domain Expansion but Malevolent Shrine crashes down around Sukuna even as it forms. There is now blood dripping from his eyes and mouth. Unlimited Void had hit Sukuna for less than 10 seconds, but that was enough to damage his brain. He's not opening a domain either. Now it's Sukuna's turn to try and clear his bloodstained face. Gojo, loving this, laughs at the top of his lungs. He gestures to the building where Jujutsu High students are located. They're watching him. So it's time for Sakuna to help him look even cooler. Gojo delivers the next heavy punch directly on Sakuna's jaw. But both men are back to smiling. They are enjoying this like nothing else. Gojo doesn't let up, grabbing Sakuna's collar and pushing him forward through building after building. Before the King of Curses can get a counter in, Gojo pulls his foe over his shoulder and throws Sakuna as far away as he can. A trail of rubble flies after the ancient sorcerer. Sukuna's on his feet before the debris hits the ground. Gojo's following close behind, the rubble starting to circle his flowing arm. Sukuna senses what Gojo's about to do a second too late. The wreckage of Shinjuku crunches around Sukuna, crushing him in the center of a globe. He breaks out of it in less than a second, the sheer force of the impact knocking Gojo away. Sukuna grins as he charges at Gojo, ready to land a devastating blow. But then he stops, shocked. Gojo's already bringing his kick down on Sukuna's head. With less than a second to spare, Sukuna somersaults out of the way. Somehow though, this has made the wheel of Mahoraga start to darken. Sukuna tries to kick at Gojo, hoping to stop the other sorcerer from recovering. Before it lands though, Gojo splits apart into a series of duplicates. He's moving from spot to spot faster than anyone can see, pushing Limitless to a whole new level. The first Gojo moves towards Sukuna, fist clenched. The King of Curses just watches, ready for the punch. Gojo comes at Sukuna from multiple angles, but it is not enough. Sukuna catches the punch. Gojo recognizes his mistake, and Sukuna grins, triumphant. Gojo manages to partially block the next punch with his hand, but the overwhelming force is enough to blast him away. Gojo only manages to stop the blowback by catching a traffic light and using it as support. The two just stare at each other for a second. The wheel above Sukuna turns. He's used Mahoraga's technique to adapt to Gojo's infinity. Both men are smiling. Gojo's worked out that when Sukuna is using domain amplification, the wheel blacks out, showing that adaptation is paused. Sukuna has noted that Gojo is limiting his curse technique use, not wanting to let Sukuna adapt to his offensive moves. The light goes green. Sukuna charges at Gojo, who quickly moves elsewhere. With a clenched fist, Gojo brings down the traffic light behind Sukuna, but it's not enough for a surprise attack. Sukuna grabs the lights, swinging them forward like a club. But that is also not enough. The traffic light stops short of Gojo. Infinity is still up. The two take a second to adjust to this, walking away from each other. Gojo's worked it out. Mahoraga's wheel needs to turn seven times to beat Infinity. It's got three more to go. Gojo laughs at the idea. He's got a window. Sukuna calls it a countdown until Gojo loses his smirk. But as the white-haired sorcerer points out, they both smirk a lot. And he doesn't need three more rotations to kill Sukuna. Gojo's rushed in Sukuna's direction. The wheel continued on to its second spin. Despite the impending adaptation, Gojo couldn't help but smile. Sukuna's trying to dodge through a building, not wanting to let Gojo get a clear shot at him. The building collapses as the two sorcerers crash through it. Finally, Gojo's caught up and raises his hands. Eight blue spheres materialize around Sukuna. 
Sukuna runs to avoid being ripped apart, but these spheres of laps follow right after him, chasing Sukuna through the air. And before they even catch up, Gojo is doing the same thing. He grabs Sukuna's leg, elbowing him right in the jaw, and kicking him down to the ground level. It's enough force to draw blood, but Sukuna is grinning. The wheel turns, and Sukuna smirks. Only one to go. Gojo follows close to the ground, trying to think ahead. He needs to pile his offensive on, trying to stop Sukuna from adapting to his next move. Gojo pulls a sign for red, even as Sukuna staggers to his feet. The wheel darkens. Sukuna's putting up amplification to limit the blow. But it's too late. Red flashes, washing over Sukuna, breaking the massive window behind them to shreds. But as the rubble clears, Gojo growls, annoyed. It wasn't enough. Sukuna's amplification minimized the damage. He can't fully negate blue or red, though. He's not adapted to them. Gojo pulls away, watching his foe closely. Sukuna calls Gojo out for getting worried, but Gojo has a surprise for his opponent. Red hasn't detonated yet. Sukuna did not see that coming. Red explodes, this time hitting with full force. Sukuna groans. Gojo threw that thing around the whole building, ready to hit Sukuna in the back. Unwilling to let this chance slip by, Gojo charges at his foe, curse energy pooling in his fist. A full power black flash crash into the ancient sorcerer. It's enough. Sukuna's eyes finally glaze over. Mahoraga's wheel falls, clattering to the floor. And then, it starts to spin again. Gojo's eyes go wide. He's too late. The shadow grows from where the wheel landed. Before Gojo can run, Mahoraga's two massive hands emerge from the darkness. One grabs Gojo, holding him close. The other, bladed hand, slashes right across his torso. That was the seventh spin. Infinity is down. Gojo breaks away from the cursed spirit, taking a moment to think this through. It's been a long time since he's been hurt. That hasn't been a thing for him since Toji. But it's exciting. He's used to being alone, the strongest sorcerer. Being faced with someone who can actually have a shot at killing him is everything. He goes for a black flash boosted punch on Mahoraga. The cursed spirit catches it, but screams in pain. It's enough to make him reel back. While Gojo has this chance, he starts to chant going through the gestures like he had at the start of this fight. Curse Technique Reversal Before he can complete the move, Mahoraga is covered by a giant swarm of bunnies, trying to hide the target from Gojo. Satoru grins. The monster is still hurting from his punch. Now he's bringing it out of hiding with Red. Everything starts to crumble, the bunnies quickly hopping away. Gojo and Mahoraga both emerge, even as Sakuna catches up with them. It's become a three-way brawl with Sukuna trying to defend Mahoraga so it can attack Gojo. Sukuna actually threw a fire extinguisher at his opponent. It explodes in a shower of white foam, giving Mahoraga a chance to jump down and attack. While it does so, Sukuna claps his hands together in a familiar gesture. Piercing blood. Gojo parries Mahoraga's blow, but Sukuna's lance strikes him. While the Shikigami touches Gojo, his infinity is negated. Mahoraga tries to go for a follow-up attack, but Gojo dodges back. They're both going to be targeting him. This just became a two against one. But Sukuna clasps his hands. He's not done using Ten Shadows technique. He's got a second spirit to summon. A hulking monstrosity. Nue Totality. Merged Beast Agito. The two spirits flank Sukuna as he proudly declares that it is now a three against one. But Gojo undercuts the moment, pointing out that these two make the tiny Sukuna look like a kid stuck between them. The Shikigami both charge at Gojo, filling the hallway. Sukuna slides beneath them, making the sign to use piercing blood again. Gojo dodges it, turning and trying to land a punch on Sukuna. But the older sorcerer pushes himself away, even as Mahoraga gets close. Gojo just about dodges his punch, dancing between it and Super Nue. Gojo jumps between the pair of monsters. Time to end this. One shot of red rips through the two massive monsters, but the pair are still intact. Mahoraga is already adapted to Red too, at least partially. Gojo's only got one shot left at taking down the invulnerable Shikigami. Unlimited Hollow. Gojo ducks out of the building, both Mahoraga and Nue following right behind him. He ducks under Mahoraga's claw, letting the big guy get his stuck in the roof of a building while he turns to punch Nue. The thing's flesh just pops back into shape. Gojo circles around to its back, ripping off its scorpion tail. But Mahoraga is back now, and Nue regenerates the tail just as easily. This Nue has round deer's regeneration. Gojo has to destroy it in one punch, just like Mahoraga. 
But before he can go for another attack, Mahoraga goes on the offensive, slashing at Gojo with a blow that sends debris flying. Gojo chuckles away even as the rocks crash around him. Mahoraga goes for another punch, but Gojo is still far too quick. Gojo glances back at the spirit, meeting its gaze as he gets ready for what's next. He lashes out at Mahoraga with a twisting kick, giving himself the time to turn around to Nue. He hits the monster with all he's got, even as Mahoraga starts charging to get his own hit in. Gojo needs to destroy Agito before Sukuna can make use of its healing. Meanwhile, Sukuna reminded Mahoraga that it is his shadow now, not Megumi's. He wants it to see what it is truly capable of now. The wheel turns, and Gojo's hand is severed from his body. Mahoraga's slash cut through the surrounding buildings as well. A throne slash similar to what Sukuna would use. The King of Curses was very pleased. Now it is two spirits versus a one-armed Gojo closing in on him through the air. This time, Sukuna joins in, smacking Gojo down towards the ground and kicking him right in the face before he reaches it. Nui sliding down the building side with the other two, landing a punch on the injured Gojo's face. But that was what he wanted. Gojo has pulled cursed energy in his remaining hand. Nui is within arm's reach with no one else to get in the way. As the building crashes down around them, Sukuna and Mahoraga are forced to watch as Gojo throws Nui away with a maximum output blue. It tosses the spirit across Shinjuku. Nui crashes through building after building, ripping a scar through the skyline. The force is far too much. The cursed spirit breaks up into a ball of blood, viscera, and dark cursed energy. As his arm healed, Gojo looked up at his handiwork with something else in mind. The last bits of Nui kept dissolving as he blew energy hung in the air. Gojo takes a step away from Mahoraga and Sukuna while he continues to heal. Satoru is grinning, more excited than ever. Meanwhile, Sukuna, for the first time in this entire fight, looks uneasy. One quick wave is enough to blast Mahoraga away with raw cursed energy. Sukuna is forced to watch as his bodyguard is thrown back. Gojo closes the gap, and Sukuna tries to throw a punch, but Gojo grabs the outstretched arm. Pulling Sukuna back, he throws the King of Curses right at Mahoraga. The Shikigami grabs his master close, protecting him as Gojo's next punch pushes the two right through the outer wall into the building. Now that he's created some distance, Gojo starts to chant again. Aware of the cursed energy, Sukuna can feel what is coming next. Red. He can deal with that. Mahoraga can defend against it, and he'll adapt to make sure it doesn't hurt. And yes, Gojo blasts Red, straight up in the air, away from both of them. There's silence for a second. Then Sukuna realizes what Gojo just did. He yells for Mahoraga, ordering it to stop this attack. The Cursed Spear crashes through the building, pushing its way out from another angle, trying to circle around Gojo. Hollow Purple is what happens when you combine Red and Blue. And the blue that crushed Nue is still hanging in the air. Mahoraga's gotten close to it. If the Demon General gets between the blue and red, it can stop them from colliding. But Gojo uses the pull of blue to throw himself between it and Mahoraga. Because the Shikigami had adapted to blue's pull, that gave Gojo the edge in speed. Its adaptation has backfired. Mahoraga tries to bring up a blade to block, even as Gojo pulls his arm back for a vicious hook. The Shikigami's knocked back, nowhere near where it needs to be to stop Red. Sukuna's not done yet, though. He readies piercing blood, looking to use it to trigger Red early. He fires a blast just one second before Gojo tries to stop him with a swift punch. The arrow of blood rushes through the eye, right at Red. Sukuna grins, but Gojo is not out of it yet. He chants a mantra while Sukuna's eyes go wide. The arrow of blood twists through the air, entering blue and fades away. The chant powering up blue is enough to absorb piercing blood. It's over. Nine ropes, polarized light, crow and declaration between front and back. Hollow purple. Instead of a beam, this time the whole area explodes in blinding light. The turning wheel of Mahoraga, the sign of its adaptation, fades away in front of the force of Gojo's power. It cannot survive this. As the smoke clears, a bloodied figure steps forward. Sakuna's lost a hand and barely looks like he can stand up. Across from him, Satoru Gojo stands strong. He's taken some burns, but he's looking much better than his counterpart. Sakuna's taken a ton of damage and has lost cursed energy. 
while Gojo is ready to heal and fight. He's got this. But no, the fight ended a minute ago. Gojo is on the ground, blood pooling from his mouth. He can see debris still falling from Hollow Purple's blast. Sukuna, slowly healing, explains. Mahuraga's adaptation helped Sukuna work out how to get past Gojo's infinity. It worked out how to cut through everything, changing his target to cut everything in its way. Sukuna could duplicate that, and it was enough to finally let his curse technique hit Gojo. Grinning, Sukuna congratulates Gojo on a magnificent fight, promising to never forget him. With his final breath, Gojo smiles, content. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.